Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where today we're going to be taking a look at a very sweet exclusive from White Mountain Knives. Check them out for all of your knife and EDC needs and use the code WSW10 for 10% off any knife they have, as well as this knife. This knife right here is none other than the Real Steel G-Frame, and this is their exclusive version of the G-Frame with titanium handles, S35VN steel, a fantastic offering. We're going to get into all the details here in just a bit, but before we do that, I want to thank you guys for tuning in today. If you like what you see, please do me a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button, follow along, and I will continue to bring you the content. Now let's take a look at some overall specs on this knife right here. We have an overall length of 7.75 inches with a blade length coming in at 3.375 inches. The blade width on this guy is 0.75 inches with a blade thickness coming in at 0.10 inches. As I said, blade steel is S35VN with a drop point style blade, a flat grind, a handle length coming in at 4.375 inches with a handle length of point or handle thickness of 0.4 inches. Handle width on this guy is 0 0.80 inches with a handle material, as I said before, again, of titanium with a frame lock locking mechanism, a user of a right or left tip-up carry, a weight of only 2.6 ounces, a price coming in at $109.99, and designed by the ever-so-talented Ostap Hell. He's another one. He's had a lot of pretty darn good designs come out lately. This is absolutely one of them. And uh, let's take a look at some size comparisons because this is a nice size knife. This is a, a knife that can go with you to a lot of places too. I think it would work well in a lot of settings and uh, it just looks clean. Here we have one that I like to compare it with, the Quiet Carry Waypoint, and then also the Kaiser Genie. As you can see in terms of length, a little longer than the Waypoint, and uh, about the same length as the Genie here. Very close to the Genie in terms of overall length. But uh, yeah, just some nice clean looking knives there. And we've got one more group of size comparisons of a couple other ones that I think are gonna help everybody out here. That is the Kaiser Smock. At Kaiser Smock, I, where did that come from? That would be the Spyderco Smock, everybody. The Spyderco Smock. And here we have the Benchmade Bug Out. Or, what is wrong with me this morning? The Benchmade 940. I'm just gonna start uh, putting brand names and model names in a hat and drawing them out when I, when I put knives on the table because that's about as good as what I just did for you. <laughs> as you can see, there we go. Close in size to both of those guys. Definitely more neutral in appearance, and I like that sometimes. Sometimes you want kind of just a, uh, you know, a, a no frills knife that just is clean, looks good, and uh, that is what we have here. And this blade, gosh, let's start with this blade. A very clean, attractive drop point that uh, is also somewhat slender and very slicey. An edge rating of 18 thousandths and a thinner stock than usual makes some really good cutting geometry on this knife, and it really is a pleasure to cut with. I, I was very surprised at just how big of a difference that, uh, you know, I would say on average from the knives that I've looked at, kind of the average thickness of a blade stock is, you know, 0.12 inches. And uh, to get that 0 0.10 along with the 18 thousandths, that really does make a huge difference. If you were to have 18 thousandths on a, a stock of, you know, 0.12 inches, it is a noticeable difference. Or maybe it's just a smoothness in the edge. Um, there was definitely something about it that really stuck out to me uh, as I was uh, going through my paper tests. It was definitely slicing uh, better than the rest or better than most of the rest. Uh, very, very impressive indeed. And the jimping on this blade is also, there's there's perfect jimping all over this blade. You have the flipper tab here, which I love they have put jimping on this flipper tab. Usually when you have flipper tabs of this design where they're just both kind of rounded, they don't put jimping there. I don't know why they don't do that. Um, now I'm not just talking about real steel, real steel. I'm talking about kind of the, the knife industry in general. This has tended to just be uh, left 
left smooth like this side here and it always bugged me and I'm so glad they did that on this because it does make a huge difference. And then you have jumping up here in two spots, which I think is nice. Um, even though they didn't really continue it between the two, that doesn't really matter. Um, I think it looks fine either way. And regardless, you still have, you still get plenty enough traction anywhere in this area. So, it, I mean, it's really, it's, yeah, it, it's not an issue, but just great jimping. Very, very good tacky feel and bite on your thumb um, without tearing it up. But of course, it just, it, it works great. And now going into the rest of the blade, in terms of billboarding, there's just not a lot. It's uh, it's it's very simple, non-billboardish branding, I guess is the best way to put it. You just have your real steel heel here, like you see on a lot of other knives, and then you have your Ostap Hell and your blade steel. So it kind of looks like the, eh, kind of looks like the color, the print or whatever that is got kind of wiped off with the blade. But regardless, this is also a kind of a sample, guys. This is not uh, this is not part of the production run, so. Uh, yeah, probably worth noting. Um, but yes, very, very nice blade overall. I wish the Fuller had a little more use to it, but it is basically just purely aesthetic unless you have like, uh, maybe if you have a thumbnail that's extra long and strong, <laughs> maybe you can whip it out there, but I don't think you can. Purely aesthetic, but it looks really, really good and gives the blade just a nice little touch. Without the Fuller, it would look almost too plain, too simple. That fuller gives it just a little bit of zip it needed. Now going into the handle and ergos. Ergos are really good. There's no issues at all. I didn't expect the ergos to be like, you know, drop dead fantastic because, you know, they're pretty basic ergos. But it fills your hand pretty well. There's no hot spots. It's nice and smooth. Um, very good. No issues whatsoever. Um, I do love how the handle up here on the jimping, how the handle is kind of con contoured or knocked down a little to make that jimping proud. That makes a huge difference. I mean, an absolutely massively huge difference. I think it's a really good idea and it works very, very well. Another thing is you take a closer look down the, down the handle, um, you kind of have very similar hardware. Now, they're not matching because they're different sizes, but in terms of appearance, they're the same design. And I like that. Again, that makes for that clean, uniform look um, that not a lot of knives have, really. I mean, they're just, you know, everyone has their own, you know, angle when it comes to designing a knife in terms of aesthetics. And some are a little more out there. Some are a little more simple. Um, some are very basic. This one is just clean and it, it just works well looking at it. It's, it's nice to, it's nice to see it set up on both ends with, with hardware that's similar. So I just think that looks really good. Um, now as for the pocket clip, there's one issue with this pocket clip. Um, it's one that some people are going to make a bigger deal out of than it really is, but it is a deal that needs to be pointed out. So in terms of this pocket clip, you have ergonomics that are great. You have in and out of the pocket with the clip tension and ramp here that are fantastic. No issue with any of that. And it also looks good. Wire clips usually look pretty decent. This one has kind of a little bit of a, a, a slenderness to it down towards the bottom, which I also like. Um, but there is one issue. Houston, we have a wiggle. There is, there's a little wiggle with this uh, pocket clip right here. So as you can see, it kind of made a little line on the knife. Now, again, this is just the sample I had. Um, and it, I believe it is just a prototype. Well, not, not necessarily a prototype, but a sample version, not part of the production run. So you never know. I don't think this is going to be the case with all of them. And it's not It's not just the fact that the wire clip is loose. It's not that it's, uh, uh, well, no, it is, maybe it's a little loose. It's not that it's uh, weak. It's not, it's not wiggling from it bending. It's wiggling from, if you look in the base down there, you see it moving? So what happened is the screw here, or the, yeah, the, the, the screw hardware is not screwed down enough to really put pressure on all the clip. Um, and I tried tightening it down more. I just, it, it wouldn't go anymore. So um, I, the, I, I don't know if this is too thin or there's something there. I'm not sure, but it's not the weakness of the clip. I, that's important to know. It's not that this is just real flimsy. This is actually, the retention is really, really good on the clip, 
but it just it, it's wiggling because of there's not quite enough pressure from the screen. Now you can fix that too. You know you can go in there and uh, put something in there that'll keep it from doing that, um, which I may very well do here uh, later on down the road. But regardless, it, it's there. It's worth pointing out. But it's not the end of the world to me, only because. It, it doesn't come into that big of a play. It's not, you know, if this was a front flipper, or should I say a true front flipper, because we'll get into that in just a second. If this was a true front flipper where I had to, you know, constantly put my hand or use this clip to, to grip and flip, we may have much more of an issue, but it's a flipper. I don't, I don't need anything special from the pocket clip to aid in my deployment of the blade so because of that it doesn't make a big deal to me and it, it still looks good i mean it, the little line it makes in the handle i mean guys this isn't going to be a safe clean this is not going to be one to where if it has a little mark on the handle like that you're like oh god i just lost my whole you know all 109 dollars i spent on this knife it's it's not that big of a deal so it's just not an issue for me. This is a knife that is priced just right and built with great materials that's going to make you want to carry it and want to use it. So believe me, you're going to put more scratches on it than just that one little mark on the handle there. So that's just, it's not an issue to me. Um, also, a very solid handle in general. I mean, you, you have that one minor issue with the clip, but you have a very, very solid titanium handle with obviously no flex, no give, um, just a simple two screw attachment or two, yeah, two, uh, two, yeah, two screws, one on each end, holding it together. So very, very simple construction and it just a very solid build, a surprisingly solid build. I thought this would feel a little, a, not as heavy duty as it does, I guess is the best way to put it, but it really does feel great in hand, feels nice and strong. So I like that a lot. Now, going into the action, the action is pretty darn great, too. If you just like flippers, some people have an issue with, you know, solely fl flippers for deployment. But, um, you know, I got no issue with this flipper. It works really good. And like I said, the jimping on this guy makes for a fantastic flip. It doesn't tear up your index finger. It doesn't it doesn't hurt your finger. Um, it's not one that I really recommend push buttoning, just flipping, just regular flipping because the jimping catches your finger and adds that extra little bit of torque to the pivot area to where it just flies out and it's very smooth um, and a nice subdued sound. So it's another one. This this is a knife that is going to be a great gentleman's carry, in my opinion, a good office carry because it's not too loud. It's a clean, simple design. It's not going to make a bunch of attention when you go to open it up. It's not going to be like thwack, you know, this massive thwack throughout the room that everyone can hear. Nice and nice and mellowed out. So very good action overall. And there is a bonus. Remember when I said this wasn't a dedicated front flipper? Well, as you can see here, it doesn't look like it should be able to front flip. But let me tell you, you can indeed front flip it. And it's, you know, it's obviously not meant to be a front flipper. So it's not the best front flipping action. But you can consistently do it. I mean, I am just sitting here talking to you guys front flipping it like it's no big deal so it can definitely be done you cannot do the reach around on this guy this is not reach around to prove but it's not supposed to be um it, it was just a nice little bonus i found out thanks in part to that awesome jimping up there that just works great so very very cool little package here i really like what white mountain knives has done with a very nice clean kind of gentleman style carry um to me this is a gentleman style carry overall thoughts it's an absolute winner, guys. I really do like this. It's a killer design with S35VN, titanium, great action for $110. $110. And only $100 if you use my WSW10 code. So for $100, bucks, you can not beat it. You really can't beat it. And you can kind of look over the little bit of the minor wiggle issue we have here with the clip. That kind of just is what it is. A lot of people aren't going to care about it, but I know some people it really would bother. So I pointed it out. But at the end of the day, you can probably also fix that. Like I said, you know, you put something down there to add a little more pressure so this isn't wiggling. I don't know. And, uh, you know, there's a very good chance yours may not be doing that. But regardless, guys, at the end of the day, I'm recommending this one all day. It's, it's just a nice, it's a very nice great price, great materials. 
Really hard to go wrong with this, with this one. That is the Real Steel G-Frame, a white Mountain Knives exclusive. It's gonna be linked to go, linked, <laughs> linked below, so you can go to the bottom and pick one up. Now, I'm gonna go have another cup of coffee because I obviously cannot talk this morning. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And until the next one, I'm out.